Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. Today is Vlogmas Day 18. Now, if you aren't familiar with Vlogmas, it's something that a bunch of YouTubers do where we post a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So like I said, today is Vlogmas Day 18, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to create a digital spinner in Wheel of Names. Wheel of Names is an amazing website that makes it super simple and easy to create a digital spinner. Digital spinners are great for a lot of different reasons. I'm gonna be sharing some in today's video, but one reason in particular that really stands out is that you can use a digital spinner to randomly call on students or to randomly draw students' names. So without further ado, let's get started. So I am on the Wheel of Names website and I got here by going to wheelofnames.com. I will have that URL linked for you guys in the video description down below in case you want to just click it directly to get to the website. Now the first thing that I personally like to do when I get on this website is I like to close out of the ads on the left hand side. I just personally find these ads to be a little bit distracting so just click that X to go ahead and exit out of the ads. Now next you will see that we have this big digital spinner in the center of our screen and then on the right hand side we have this, this rectangle that has a field of names in it. So you'll see that we have a list of names that correspond to the names on the digital spinner in the center of our screen. So the way this works is all we would need to do is just click the spinner to actually spin the wheel. So let's take a look. So you'll see when I clicked the spinner, it spun around, now you see confetti, you hear some clapping sounds, and it says we have a winner, Charles. Now I have two choices. I can press close to keep Charles' name on the digital spinner, or I can click remove to remove Charles from this list. So I'm going to go ahead and click remove to remove Charles. Now again, this was the list of students that you saw just when you visited the Wheel of Wit Names website for the very first time, you will receive this exact same list. Now I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually edit this list and add in your own names. So over on the right hand side where you see all these names have been typed out, I can go ahead and delete all of these choices and when I delete them, they will be deleted automatically from that digital spinner. It's super nice that it updates in real time for you. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and type in different names. So I might type in Harry, then I'll press enter, I'll type in Ron, enter Hermione, Snape, oops, Dumbledore. All right, and so now I've added my list of students. You can add way more entries than I have included here. You can add a very high number of entries. I'm not sure the exact number, but you can add tons and tons of choices to this spinner, and each of those sections will just keep getting a little bit smaller, but you can fill up this spinner with lots and lots of names or lots and lots of different categories of things that you wanna be spinning for. So I've just added in a couple as an example, and the next thing I wanna show you guys how, what to do is how you would actually share this with students. So I can go ahead and press this full screen option, and just project this on the board for students to see. Then we could just click the digital spinner. And it would select a name, there would be applause. And then if I wanted, I could press remove to remove the student name. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on close for now. I'm gonna exit this full screen because I wanna show you guys a few more features, specifically how to customize your wheel of names. So of course it's enough to just stop there and that's plenty if you'd like, but I do like that you have the ability to customize your digital spinners. So I'm gonna go up here to where it says customize and I'm gonna show you some of these features that you can customize. First we have during spin, this category, then we have after spin and then we have appearance. So first for during spin, you have the ability to change the sound. I personally am fine, to, fine with that ticking sound, but there are some other choices that you can choose from. Let's take a look at a really random one. I've never clicked on this one before, Ripples in Time. Let's press play to see what it sounds like. Let me turn up my volume.
I don't really like that sound very much. It might have practical purposes. Sure, I'm gonna go ahead and just click back on that ticking sound, but hopefully that gives you an help, a helpful idea of some of the sounds that you might be able to experiment with and play around with in Wheel of Names. So again, I'm gonna click back on that ticking sound. I did just wanna show you guys that you do have the ability to add different sound effects. You also can change the volume. So maybe if I wanted to use that cinematic sound effect, I might want to lower the volume a little bit. It's kind of up to you. Then next we have allow duplicates on the wheel. So let's say that you have, um, for some reason, you wanna have duplicates on here. Uh, you, this feature here allows you to have duplicates. This might be helpful if you are pasting a list of something and you're not sure if there are duplicates. You can uncheck this so that it would delete the duplicates. That might be a helpful feature for that, but it's kind of up to you. And then we also have spin slowly and we have show title. So I personally just like to keep these settings as they are, but these are here available for you to edit if you would like. Then next we have this spin time. I personally like to keep this spin time pretty short at just 10 seconds. I find that if you make it really long, it's harder to keep students attention. It's harder for student engagement. And so I personally like to keep this where it's at, which is at 10 on my screen here. Then next we have max number of names visible on the wheel. So this is where I was saying earlier that I wasn't sure exactly how many names you could add to this wheel. Here it says that you can add as many as a thousand different names on this wheel here. So all of the names in the text box that you have up here have the same chance of winning regardless of this value. So if you wanna just show 500 names, a maximum of 500, each, uh, each item would still have the same chance of winning even if you can't see 500 visible on the wheel at a time. Now this is gonna be a very extreme example. Most likely those of you who are using Wheel of Names are probably gonna be using at most like 50 items on your wheel. Uh, I personally have only ever used this for, you know, a couple hundred if I've been doing like a giveaway or something on my Instagram. So for the most part, I've kept this uh, just where it's at because I really haven't had a purpose to include more than 500 names on this wheel of names. Then the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is that after spin category. So I'll click on after spin and then you will see that now we can add some sound again. So that subdued applause is what you hear when, um, uh, a winner has been selected. You'll hear that there is that subdued applause sound. I'll play it for you guys with my volume up higher than earlier. And then again, there are some other choices here. So let's say we wanna choose this mystery bell. Let's see what this one sounds like. So some of these might be fun to play around with depending on what your activity is going to be. Again, I'm just gonna choose subdued applause for now, but there are lots of fun sound effects that you can choose from, and that's gonna be the sound that plays after you spin once a name has been chosen. Then next we have this choice here to animate the winning entry. I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Then we have launching confetti. I personally like to keep that one on. I think it's just fun that it launches confetti. Then uh, if you want, you can also auto remove a winner after five seconds, so it'll keep the winner in there, but it will remove it for you in case you forget. And then we have this display pop-up message. So if you guys remember when I did spin, spin earlier, there was a pop-up message that says we have a winner. I can change that if I want. So I could say our morning leader is, just as an example. And then again, display the remove button. I like to have that checked. And then if you wanna play a click sound when the win winner is removed, you do have the ability to do that. So I've changed a couple of settings that we'll take a look in just a second when we actually spin that wheel again. Next, I wanna show you how to change the appearance. So first, uh, there are a couple different ways that you can change colors. So first, you have the ability to uh, change uh, these the different colors of this wheel here, or you have the ability to change the wheel to be a background image. So if that's something that might be interesting to you here, this example, it looks like it's a chocolate chip cookie maybe, you do have the ability to actually upload an image as the background of the wheel. I personally found that to be really awesome, though it's a little bit difficult to actually uh, read the words on the wheel, so you might wanna play around with that. Personally, I just like to change the colors, but again, it's completely up to you. So Wheel of Names has some themes already set for you that are fun to choose from. So if I click on this apply a theme option, you'll see that there are all these different colorful themes chosen here that we can um, take a look at. So because we are doing Vlogmas, I'm going to choose uh, this winter blues choice here. 
and you'll see that now we have all these wintry colors here. Um, so I like that there are these themes that you can choose from. There's tons. You can choose based off of countries. Um, you can choose, you know, based off of holidays. You can choose different games. So there's lots and lots of color choices that you can choose from. But like I said, I'm just going to stick with this winter blues one since we're celebrating Vlogmas. Then next you have the ability to add an image at the center of the wheel. I will show you guys what that looks like in just a little bit, but if you have a image saved on your computer on your computer that you want to be at the very center of that wheel where that white circle is right here, you do have the ability to actually upload that here and you can change the size as well, making it really small or you can making it make it bigger. I'm going to make it bigger just so you guys can see what the size looks like and I'll show you what an image looks like in a bit. And then lastly, we have the page background color. So right now we have it set up as white. I'm going to change it to this frosty blue color here just to show you guys what that looks like. And now when I press OK, you'll see that our wheel has changed quite a bit. So you'll notice some immediate changes. Of course, our background here is this frosty blue color. I'm going to close out of that ad. Uh, you'll also notice that our digital spinner has a really big circle in the center. So that's another feature that I adjusted in that customized section. And then of course we have our winter blue theme on the actual spinner itself. So if we go back to that full screen mode, I'm going to show you guys what this looks like since we adjusted some of the features. So if I click here to spin, we still have that ticking sound because I like that sound and it's chosen Dumbledore. So you'll see there's a few differences here. First, our confetti matched that winter blue theme. Second, instead of it saying um, your winner is or we have a winner or something like that, it has been edited to include the text that I added that says our morning leader is. And then you might have noticed that Dumbledore had that big animation that popped up. So those are a couple of the features that I adjusted in that customization section. So now I'm going to press close and we're going to exit full screen again. And I'm going to show you guys a few more features in Wheel of Names. So next, I want to show you that you do have the ability to shuffle these names if you would like to change the order. So you can just press shuffle and you'll see that the order is changing. You also have the ability to sort A through Z. And then lastly, you have the ability to, ability to add an image. I'm going to show you what that looks like again in just a bit here. All right. So let's say that you absolutely love this digital spinner and you want to save it so that you can use it for later. To save a spinner, you can press the save button and you can give it a title. So I'm going to say Harry Potter wheel. And then I'll press save and I will show you how you can actually find those wheels. So if I click here to where it says open, you'll see that I have this Harry Potter wheel saved. I can press open and it will open the file. So that's a really handy way. If you want to hold on to a wheel, you can actually save it so that every time you open it up, it'll look exactly like this. It's a super helpful feature, especially if you have, you know, the same kids in your classroom every day and you want to be using this wheel multiple times. That's a really helpful feature to actually save your wheel. Next, you have the ability to share a wheel. So if we click here on the share option, there's some directions here. Basically, what this means is it just tells you that this is going to create a public link um, to your current wheel. It's going to include its name, its colors, its settings, and the link is going to work for anyone who has access to the link. So that is an important thing to note for privacy reasons. If you share this link with someone, they will be able to access it. And if they choose to share it with someone else, that other person will still be able to access it. So that's something important to keep in mind. Now, if I press continue, then it allows me to title the wheel again. I already have this titled. And then it says, show the title to people who use your shared link. And then now it says, what should a person be able to do when they use your shared link? Now, these are two important choices to choose from. The first one says they should only be able to spin the wheel. And then next it says they should be able to spin the wheel and edit their own copy of the wheel. So if you want somebody to be able to actually make a copy of your wheel, you would want to select this choice here. If you're just using this with like your teaching partner, for example, there's probably no need. So you can go ahead and just leave this option checked here. Next I'll press continue. And now I have this unique URL 
that I can share with anyone. So I can copy this. You guys can use this link. Um, anyone could use this link pretty much. And if I open up a new tab and paste it, you'll see that the, uh, that the wheel is here for us to go ahead and use. Um, so again, if I click, And then I can press close or remove and then um, that's basically how it works. So again, you can just share this URL with anyone and they are going to be able to use that same Wheel of Names file. So a really handy trick if you have a teaching partner or if you want to share this for someone else to try. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press close. And now the last thing that I want to show you guys before I show you some of those additional customization features is this drop down more menu here. So here, this just gives you some additional information. I never click on this more category, but I did just want to point it out for you guys. There's a feedback section, user reviews and tutorials, ideas for using this in the classroom, FAQs, privacy policy, etc. So you do have this drop down menu in case any of those features are of interest to you or you feel like might apply to you for some reason. But I personally never find myself clicking on that drop down menu there. Now, next, you can just create a new file by clicking right here on new. So that's pretty much everything in terms of customizing a wheel. Now I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples of Wheel of Names uh, files that I have created. The most obvious example for using Wheel of Names or a digital spinner in your classroom is to randomly call on students uh, or to create some sort of random name generator. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other more unique ways that you might use this wheel of names in your classroom. So right now we are looking at an example of a morning meeting share prompt digital spinner that I put together in wheel of names. Now you'll notice that I have definitely customized this one a lot more than you saw in the previous previous part of this video. Right now, again, you'll see that we have this digital spinner. There are these really fun, bright colors. And at the center of the spinner, it says click to spin. So that's what I was talking about, where you can actually upload an image to the center of your wheel. I just created an image that says click to spin. I created that in Google Slides. I saved it as a JPEG and I uploaded it to the center of the spinner here just to add an extra additional feature. Now you'll also notice that on the on the actual segments of the spinner, there are images that I have uploaded. So those again are um, prompts that I created and I uploaded as images to the actual spinner. So when I click here, you'll see that the morning share prompt says, what do you like to do outside of school? And so students could then take turns sharing with each other or with the class what they like to do outside of school. Then you can press remove and move on to the next one. So let's try another. This one says your morning share is what do you like to do for fun? So again, I can just press, press remove and these are really fun. You can do these daily if you would like. There's kind of a lot of different opportunities for how you might use these morning meeting shares. If you wanted, you could use these as writing prompts instead. You could use them as icebreaker activities. So this is just one example of how you might use Wheel of Names in your classroom beyond just as a digital spinner that allows you to call on student names. Now let's take a look at another example. So here is another example of how you might use Wheel of Names in your classroom in a slightly more creative way. Right now we are looking at a digital spinner that I put together that has some winter brain breaks. So here you'll see that in the center, again, I have that image that says click to spin. And then on the actual segments of the spinner, there is a piece of clip art along with a uh, brain break challenge for students. So if we click this spinner, you'll see that with this one, it says pretend to ice skate. So that would be a brain break activity where students would then have to pretend to ice skate. 
we could press remove, we could spin again, and then maybe it might choose build a snowman this time. So students would have to pretend to be building a snowman. So this is kind of just a fun way to incorporate a digital spinner into your brain breaks. This is something that I recommend teachers pull out when they are looking for a transitional activity, or maybe they notice that their students need to move their bodies a little bit. This can be a fun way to incorporate uh, a digital spinner into your brain breaks or into, uh, into your teaching throughout the day. By the way, if you guys liked the winter brain breaks or the morning share spinner, I will have both of those linked in the video description down below so you guys can check them out. In addition to using Wheel of Names during morning meeting or for brain breaks, there's also a ton of other ways you might want to try this out with your students. It could be fun to incorporate this into a review game for students where you have a list of questions that you input into Wheel of Names and you have students click on the digital spinner and then they have to try to come up with an answer to that question. It could be a great way to get students to practice their math skills. Maybe you'll type in some basic math problems for students into Wheel of Names. They spin it and then they have to try to solve the problem either individually or in small groups. So there's lots of ways that you can use Wheel of Names for a classroom community, like the examples that we saw in today's video. And there's ways that you can add this to your curriculum as well. So even though Wheel of Names is a really wonderful tool to use as a random name generator, as a digital spinner where you're able to call on student names, it's also a really great tool that you can use in other more creative ways in your classroom as a teacher. So thank you so much for watching today's video all about incorporating Wheel of Names and digital spinners into your classroom. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers, and during Vlogmas, I'm posting a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.